at some point you're going to have to retire. You took over for someone else. You're going to have to pass the torch on. I'm not campaigning. But at some point it has to end. If you could say you have accomplished one thing, the culmination of your work, let's say, what would that be? Well, I one of the um, one of the things that really warms my heart, and this just happened recently. I was at an event at uh, Laurentian University in Sudbury, and I was speaking there, and there were um, students from all over Ontario. It was a biology conference, and during that event, I had some students come up to me who are now graduating, saying, I used to watch you when I was a kid. I had a kid series called Heads Up that was all about space that ran on the Knowledge Network and TV Ontario in the mid-2000s, around 2004, 2005. They said, you, you helped me get interested in science, and that's why I'm a scientist today. And at the same event, I had professors come up to me and say, I used to watch you when I was a kid back in the 80s, because I had another kid show called Wonderstruck that was on the CBC in the 80s. So I've got two generations of people who are in science now who are telling me they got that way because they watch me, that I, I inspired them to get interested in science. That's my reward. That, 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 just, that just overwhelms me when I hear that. And I've, I've even had people stop me in the street and say, you know, I'm a scientist now because I watched you. So if I can inspire someone to get interested in science. They don't have to become scientists, but at least take an interest in it. So that we'll have an educated society. So that as we face the challenge of climate change or overpopulation or water or food or whatever it is that we need to deal with, that we'll have a smart population that can look at the science, because science will point to some sensible solutions and make the right decisions so that we can get through this crisis and get over to the other side of it. So if I had a small part of that, in, in educating people about science or inspiring them about science, I'll feel I've done my job. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, you're not a scientist. You have a fascination in science. You're a conduit to others. How many scientists have you created? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, that, who knows, right? Is it a hundred? Is it a thousand? And how many do they create? It's just amazing. Good for you, Bob. And thank you so much for your time today. Can, can I uh, can I send out a message to uh, to your younger listeners? If there are any younger listeners listening, you may. <laughs> well, actually, for anybody, uh, one of the best things that I did when I was in my uh, late twenties was I went all the way around the world by myself. And travel is one of the best forms of education that you can get. I learned during my solo trip that people are generally good wherever you go. The best thing that happened to me when I was traveling is getting lost because I'd have to ask for help. And so often people would, would say, well, why don't you come in for some tea or some cha, even if they didn't speak English. They heard I was from Canada, especially. But I found that most people in the world are just like you and I. They want to get on with their lives. They want to raise their families, have a job. eat. It's not what you see on the news. And if you see the world through television or through the computers, that's not really what the world is like. The news reports on a very small minority of people who hate each other and who are fighting. I find the news now is really who died today. That's what the news has become. But in fact, the world is actually a very beautiful place and people are wonderful. And I encourage everybody to get off North America. We live in an island of affluence in a world where there's a lot of poverty. And go to other countries and see how people live, see how different people live. And it's not always a, a horrible thing. People find ways to adapt with very few resources. And they're still funny. They still like to laugh and tell jokes and sing and dance, even though they don't have much. And it's the best education you can get to, to both see our planet culturally and see it geographically. It's, it's the most beautiful planet there is. Mars is really neat, but it's cold. And there's no oxygen in the atmosphere. It would kill you if you walked out without a spacesuit. Saturn's got its beautiful rings, fabulous looking planet, giant, so is Jupiter, but they'll kill you. There isn't another one we know of that you can step outside without a spacesuit on. We don't know of another planet like that yet. So go see it. Go look at your planet and appreciate it. Get out into nature and take a little kid with you. <laughs> take a little kid and shove their face in the dirt. Show them, 
show them turn over a rock and see what's crawling around underneath it. Just just appreciate this incredible place that we live. It's a miracle we're even here. It's astounding. Science has taught us a lot about that, but just get out and look at it for yourself. Go beyond the science.